Right, uh, Ivan van der Plas, I hope everyone is uh, hearing me and uh, I would like to thank Hanya for the very beautiful talk on different biotics and now um, I'm going uh, to take on uh, from her presentation and take one part out of it and uh, give you some additional information on human milk oligosaccharides and what's new about it. This is the layout of the presentation and of course breastfeeding is the best way how to feed uh, all infants. Breast milk is the best nutrition for every infant. And what is very typical for the composition of human milk is the presence of oligosaccharides in that human milk, which is the third most important component of mother's milk after lactose and fat, but more oligosaccharides than protein, for instance. And that's a huge difference be between mother's milk and cow's milk or cow's milk based infant formula because you see in purple that the third most important component the oligosaccharides in mother's milk is virtually absent in cow's milk and in cow's milk based infant formula. So that's a huge difference between the composition of mother's milk and cow's milk. And those Human milk oligosaccharides, they have a prebiotic effect. And you just heard about the definition of prebiotics uh, by Professor Sajewska. And prebiotics stimulate the development of a bifidogenic microbiome. And they are very unique for human milk, the presence of those uh, human milk oligosaccharides. And as everything in mother's milk, it's quite complex and more than 200 different structures have been discovered already. Uh, or more than 200 different oligosaccharides have been discovered in mother's milk. And the composition of mother's milk in human milk oligosaccharides differs over time. But what is very important is the effect of these oligosaccharides on the development of the gastrointestinal microbiome. So the left part of this slide shows you the microbiome development in a breastfed infant, which is predominant with bifidobacteria and very few coli and bacteroides. And then you see on the right part of the slide that the microbiome beyond development in a formula fit infants in a formula which is not supplemented with any pre or probiotics is still predominant in bifidobacteria but a much lower content than in the breastfed baby and much more coli and bacteroides. In other words, the microbiome development in formula fed infants is totally different than the microbiome development in breastfed infants. And that microbiome development is very important for the development of the Im uh, immune system and bifidobacteria have a beneficial effect on the development of that immune system. So the human gut is not just there for digestion of food, but it contains also gut microbiota and, uh, and that's important for the development of that uh, immune system. Because the functions of the gut microbiome are multiple. They have protective functions against pathogenic bacteria. It's very important, as I already highlighted, for the immune development. It's very important, of course, for digestive and metabolic functions. And last but not least, it's also important for the neuronal development because the gut is also con called the little brain and there is a modulation of the brain gut axis during neuronal development. And motor control and anxiety behaviors are dependent on the gastrointestinal microbiome. So there is a huge interaction between what happens within the gastrointestinal tract and not only digestion, but also immune function and also neuronal and uh, behavioral development. So what is a human milk oligosaccharide? Um, as I already said, there are more than 200 different HMOs that, that have been identified, which are classified in three main categories, non-fucosylated HMOs, fucosylated HMOs, and cellulated HMOs. Examples are 2FL and LNNT, which are added classically to infant formula. 
the neutral HMOs account for more than 75% of the total amount of uh, HMOs present in mother's milk. So it's a very complex and diverse structure. And also the amount of different HMOs present in mother's milk differs over time. It's, if you look for 2FL and LNA, and LNNT, it's much higher during early lactation than during late lactation. And also the, the amount uh, is totally different because for 2FL it's in milligram and LNNT is in microgram. So neutral HMOs predominate in the first two, four weeks of lactation, decrease over time and the amount of HMOs present uh, differs also um, over duration of lactation. Not every mother secretes the same amount of human milk oligosaccharides because you have secretors and non-secretors and mainly non-secretors have very low to no secretion of um, 2FL. And so the development of the microbiome differs in exclusively breastfed infants if the mother is a secretor or if the mother is a non-secretor. So what has been shown is that there is no difference on diversity and richness, which is a good thing, but that the number of lactobacillus and bifidobacteria are decreased if the mother is a non-secretor. And if the mother is a non-secretor, you have more enterobacteriaceae more and more lactobacillaceae and more staphylococcaceae than if the mother is a secretor. So the gastrointestinal microbiome development in a breastfed infant is not uniform because it depends on the fact whether the mother is a secretor or a non-secretor. And about 20 to 25% of the mothers are non-secretors, which is a huge amount. And the amount of HMOs depends on a lot of factors. As there is a lot of research going on, um, we know that there are multiple uh, independent variables which will influence that amount of HMOs. Lactation stage, I already highlighted that, but also maternal genetics, environment and, and uh, or season, uh, have a, an influence on the amount of HMOs, duration of pregnancy, ethnicity, parity, ge geographic location. So every mother synthesizes and secretes a very specific um, HMO composition. And there are so multiple variables which will influence the composition of mother's milk uh, in HMOs. Is it really new? No, we know since more than 100 years that there are uh, oligosaccharides present in mother's milk, uh, which stimulate the development of bifidobacteria. What is new is that since a couple of years, those HMOs can be industrially made. So is HMO added to infant formula a, a, a real HMO? In fact, no because it does not originate from mother's milk. It is industrially made, but it's an identical molecule to the one present in human milk. So calling it an HMO may um, give the wrong impression that this uh, component comes directly from mother's milk, while that is not true, it is made chemically, industrially make, but the structure of the molecule is exactly the same. So it would maybe be better to call it HMO-like or an HMO clone or human identical milk oligosaccharide to avoid confusion. As I already said, mother's milk has over 200 HMOs. 2FL is the most important one, at least in the 70, 75% of the mothers which are secretors. And there is that huge diversity in structure. So today in infant formula, we add one, two or three, or maybe in a couple of months, five HMOs, but that's far away from the 200 different. So we add now the a molecule with the identical structure, which then have the identical benefit because it's an identical molecule, but we lack the diversity which is uh, present in mother's milk because we add at the best 
five HMOs and not 200 different ones. So we should not forget that there are also prebiotic oligosaccharides of non-human milk origin. And Gos and Fos, galacto-oligosaccharides and fructo-oligosaccharides are the best known for that and have been the best studied. And Gos and Fos are prebiotic oligosaccharides which are promoting the growth of beneficial gut microbiota. We know that they stimulate the development of bifidobacteria. So, if we compare the diversity, then Gos and Fos is much closer to the diversity of human milk prebiotics or human milk oligosaccharides, but they have a different structure to, of the human milk oligosaccharides. But if you look at the range of uh, diversity, then Gos and Fos is quite comparable to what is present in human milk. But they have different effects. Because as you see in this slide, um, human milk oligosaccharides inhibit the growth of a lot of possible pathogenic bacteria. And FOS does the same, more or less, except for two bacteria. But GOS allows the growth a lot of a lot of those potentially pathogenic bacteria. So the efficacy uh, of non-human milk oligosaccharides or human milk oligosaccharides is different. And some strains of bifidobacteria use HMOs as the sole source of carbon, which means that both FOS and GOS and human milk oligosaccharides stimulate the development of bifidobacteria. But the strains that develop are different because some of the bifidobacteria only use the carbohydrate from human milk oligosaccharides. Other differences are GOS and FOS contain fructose, HMOs do not. And important is that fructose and salic acid are present only in human milk oligosaccharides. And a very small percentage, 1% of that salic acid is absorbed and transferred to the brain and has a positive effect on brain development. What about the clinical data? Also, Professor Sayevska already alluded to some of the clinical data. First of all, it's of course nutrition, and what needs to be shown is that the growth of children fed formula with human milk oligosaccharides is completely normal. But that has been extensively studied, and it's absolutely safe, and physical growth and nutritional value of those HMOs is absolutely safe. Professor Sayevska already highlighted also the importance of uh, microbiome development and dysbiosis and the fact that infections and antibiotics and hygiene and nutritional changes will change the composition of the gastrointestinal microbiome, which will result in an imbalance of the development of the immune response, which will predispose to allergic diseases. And the right part of this slide shows that fecal samples at three months, when they are different, uh, that they are different between healthy and allergic children at the age of five years. So the difference in gastrointestinal microbiome predisposes the development of allergic symptoms. So a healthy, well-balanced microbiome early in life will um, prevent the child, will protect the child, will decrease the child, uh, will decrease the risk to develop allergic disease. So HMOs modulate lymphocyte cytokine production, potentially leading to a more balanced TH1, TH2 response. And again, one slide from a long time ago, over 20 years ago, showing that the difference in composition in the intestinal microbiome exists before the development of allergic disease. So again, the importance of a well-balanced, healthy microbiome early in life cannot be stressed enough. And studies have shown that infants born by C-section and having a high hereditary risk for allergies may have a lower risk to manifest IgE-associated eczema at two years if they have a high amount of uh, oligosaccharides if they are uh, 
exclusively breastfed by a secretor mother. So the incidence of allergic disease in C-section born infants, which are exclusively breastfed, depends on the fact if the mother is secretor or non-secretor. That's also illustrated on this slide where there is a difference of diarrhea, vomiting, respiratory infection, coughing, depending on the fact in exclusively breastfed infants, if the mother is a secretor or a non-secretor. So not every exclusively breastfed infant is protected in the same way. Again, illustrated in this slide on in exclusively breastfed infants, secretor, non-secretor, showing that if an exclusively breastfed infant, if the mother is a non-secretor, the risk for that child to develop Campylobacter diarrhea or any cause of diarrhea is much higher than if the child is exclusively breastfed from a secretor mother. So the amount of 2FL, the amount of HMO present in mother's milk protects the child in a different way to develop uh, infectious disease. And here exactly the same, exclusively breastfed infants with a three times higher risk to develop atopic dermatitis if the mother is a non-secretor compared to if the mother is a secretor. This has also been studied in uh, formula fed infants where it has been shown that uh, formula supplemented with 2FL reduces the risk to develop uh, atopic dermatitis compared to formula not supplemented. And that has been related to a difference in development of inflammatory cytokines, where if you see in light blue breastfed baby and in orange or in green with uh, HMOs that level of uh, inflammatory cytokines is the same more or less in the breastfed infant than and in the infant fed formula with HMOs. And that uh, levels of cytokines in, in the infant fed formula with galactolicosaccharides is totally different. And this slide was shown by Professor Sajewska, where 2FL and LNNT were added to starter formula, showing that there was, as a secondary endpoint, a reduced uh, incidence of infections and infestations, less respiratory tract diseases, up to the age of 12 months, although the intervention was only up to the age of six months, so a prolonged beneficial effect. And what Hanya highlighted was the decreased prescription of antibiotics up to the age of one year. And that has also recently been confirmed in a study with HMOs in uh, infants with cosmic protein allergy fed an extensive hydrolysate supplemented with two HMOs, confirming the same uh, evidence, the same findings, decreased lower respiratory tract infection, decreased upper respiratory tract infection, decrease of otitis media, a significant decreased prescription of antibiotics and less antipyretics. And this is an, another way to look at it, to look at uh, prescription of antibiotics. And it shows that infants with a high bifidobacteria dominated gut microbiota community at three months, less often require antibiotics in the first year of life. So it cannot be stressed enough how important the development of that healthy microbiome early in life is. That brings me to conclusion. Breastfeeding is, of course, the best way how to feed infants because it contains that huge amount of human milk oligosaccharides and that huge diversity of human milk oligosaccharides. What do HMOs do? Well, they stimulate the development of a healthy gut microbiota. They help to mature the gut barrier uh, function. They have an antipathogenic effect. They act as a decoy receptor, so pathogens will adhere to the oligosaccharides and not to the intestinal mucosa, and they stimulate the development of a well-balanced immune response. And so it's very important to have a healthy gut microbiota because that will result in symbiosis, immune tolerance, intestinal homeostasis, and a healthy metabolism. If that gut microbiota is not well balanced, it results in dysbiosis, which predisposes the child for an increased risk to develop immune disease, 
intestinal disease and metabolic disease. And there are early in life a lot of factors which influence the development of that gut microbiota. Professor Sayaska highlighted the use of antibiotics. Proton pump inhibitors do the same thing. Uh, infant diet does have an influence. Mode of delivery, C-section versus vaginal delivery, environment all are all factors which do have an influence. 